God. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. I am glad to be here tonight. Amen. Giving honor to God who is not just the head of my life, but he is my life. Without him, I am nothing, but with him, I can do everything. I uh, thank God for this opportunity. Give honor to my pastor, my spiritual father, the Reverend Robert Bass, um, and our first lady in her absence. I thank God for such wonderful leaders here at United Missionary Baptist Church. Um, I am not going to be before you long, but I will acknowledge um, the presence of my family. My mother's side is here as well as my father's side. I'm so glad to have them come out and support me whenever I stand behind this sacred desk. Um, I would that you would stand and turn in your Bibles to Gospel according to John, the 19th chapter and the 30th verse. The Bible says, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. You may be seated. Uh, if I were to tag this sermon, I would tag it like this. My topic tonight is give it up. Give it up. The Bible here opens us up to the scene where Jesus has been hanging on this sinner's cross for what seems to be eternity. He has endured the humiliation of being put on trial before the Jewish leaders, Herod and Pilate. He has endured the embarrassment of being stripped down to just about nothing and made to bear a cross to a skull-shaped hill called Calvary. He has endured the pain of having spikes that were probably 10 inches long driven into his blessed and holy hands and driven into his anointed water-walking feet, hanging there on a sinner's cross, dying. A sinner's death is what our Savior is going through at this very moment. And as minister in training, Paul Space just said in the 28th verse of this chapter, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, yes. that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Verse 29, now there was a set vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. Verse 30, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The first thing that I would like to draw your attention to is the end of the verse number 30 where it says, and Jesus bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So many preachers down the line and so many choir directors have gotten it all wrong all these years. So many preachers saying, oh, Jesus hung his head and died. Or, oh, Jesus dropped his head and died for me. And the Bible says that he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. And as I studied, I wondered why it is that the gospel writer John here made it such a point to say that he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. And as I continued to study, I talked to Brother Webster and he defined the word bow like this, to submit or yield, to bend in worship, submission, or respect. And the Lord revealed to me that John pushed the issue of the word bow to show that Jesus was submitting to the will of his father. Jesus was saying, Daddy, I don't like it, but if it means that my people will be saved from their sins, I'll do it. Daddy, if it means that everything will be all right and they can spend eternity with me, then I'll do it. And I don't know who I'm talking to in the room tonight, but you've got some things that God has told you to do. And now it's time for you to bow your head and submit to his will. Lord, send me and I'll go. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. Tell me what to say and I will say it. But, but, but then the Lord came back and he told me that it's not only meant for us to bow and to submit to his will. But that there are some things in our lives that we may be doing that we know we ain't got no business doing. There's some places that we may be going that we know we ain't got no places in. And God is telling us that it is time to bow out. It's time for us to bow out with sleeping with somebody that ain't our husband or our wife. And commit ourselves to a monogamous agreement with the father. 
It's time for us to bow out of drinking Crown Royal and Cognac and drink from the living well that never runs dry. It, it's time out from, for us coming to church and playing church when we really need to turn around and be the church. Oh, I can't get no help in here. Somebody in the house tonight knows that the reason why I'm catching so much hell, the reason why my back is constantly up against the wall, the reason why my money is funny and my change is strange, God help you, boy, is because I've got some things in my life that I need to bow out of. The second thing that the text is tailored to teach is that we've got to give some stuff up. The end of the 30th verse said that he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Jesus understood that in order for this thing to be, in, be complete, in order for my mission to be fulfilled, in, in order for my father to truly be pleased, in order for me to save the world from his sin, I have got to give this thing up. Well, somebody missed it. I want to help somebody tonight to understand that it ain't enough just to bow out of a situation. Because just as easily as you bowed out of it, you can bow back into it. I need some folks that's going to be real with me tonight. Just as, just as easily as you put the bottle down and just as easily as you put the blunt down, it's just that easy to pick it back up. That's why we must not only bow out, but then we have to give it up. You've got to give up the spirit of poverty in order for you to be financially blessed. You've got to give up the spirit of defeat in order for you to be victorious. Or y'all miss that one. You've got to give up the spirit of infirmity in order for you to be healed. He was wounded, there it is, for my transgressions. And he was bruised for my iniquities. And the chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with every one of his stripes, thank you, Jesus. I'm healed, healed from sugar diabetes, healed from high blood pressure, healed from a broken heart and spirit, healed from depression. But first, I've got to give it up. Lastly, because I'm through, I'm almost through. After you have bowed out, and after you have given it up, then and only then can you say, it is finished. Come on, walk with me a while, I'm going somewhere. The Bible declares that after Jesus had received the vinegar, after he had endured all of the pain, after he had endured all the embarrassment, he finally said, it is finished. And the word finished in this particular sense means paid in full. Or oh, some of y'all missed it. I saw it when it went over your head. And I'm so glad tonight that the debt of my sin that I owe has been paid in full. I don't have to worry about trying to find a lamb for a sacrifice because Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. He was hung up for my hangups. He died and was buried in my stead. And early Sunday morning, sometime between midnight and the crack of dawn, he got up with all power in his hands. And because he got up, that gives me the right to get up every time I fall. Thank you, Jesus. But not only did he get up, but he got up to live inside of me. And I'm so glad tonight that he got up. And I'm so glad that he lives. I heard somebody say, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I got joy in the time of sorrow. I'm smiling when I should be crying. I'm running when ain't nobody chasing me. I'm jumping when ain't nobody shooting at my feet. Well, why you doing all that preacher? Because I've got joy. And this joy, oh, thank you, Jesus, that I have. The world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Don't worry about crying tears in the midnight hours. It is finished. The Bible declares that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I'm going to my seat now. The Lord bless you real good. But I'm so glad that I don't have to worry about being hung up on a cross for my sins because Jesus dropped the charges and dismissed my case. See, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, yeah. 